Hey guys, I uh, just wanted to do kind of a quick overview video of my experience with the Bamboo Lab printers so far. I've been getting a lot of questions, uh, a lot of comments and emails from you guys asking how I like them so far. Um, I wasn't planning on doing a bamboo video for probably about a year, uh, just because I've only been using it for three months. Um, I'd like to use it for a good little while before I give my, my thoughts on something. But since I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys about them lately, I thought I'd just do a, a quick overview video. Not gonna go into any of the features or a lot of the features. This isn't gonna be in depth about all the different uh, buttons and features and things like that. Cause there's already a lot of great YouTube videos out there that do it better than I can. Uh, just my initial thoughts so far. So I'm using this for uh, my business. I create exhaust venting solutions. If you need to vent, let's say a laser cutter or maybe an enclosed uh, resin or FDM printer, you need to vent those fumes out the window. I manufacture uh, different adapters and components to assist with that. Uh, plexiglass window inserts, uh, hose adapters to hold your hose to these custom plexiglass window inserts that I make. Uh, those are just kind of some uh, quick overview of what I've been using these for. So I have nine altogether, uh, one carbon, and then eight P1Ps. I got, uh, the first one was a P1P, and then I got the big boy just to have in case I needed to do some multi-material project. Um, and then I just kept getting more P1Ps just because they're more affordable. I can buy more of them, obviously, uh, for the price. Um, initial thoughts, holy cow, uh, where has this been all my life? Um, this is remarkable. Uh, how come no one else has made a printer like this uh, sooner? Um, so I was using 14 Ender 3s for my print farm. <clears throat> and boy, I was done with those things a long time ago. Um, yeah, so much frustration and headache and annoyances with those, just having to maintenance them all the time. Just really, really frustrating. And so I'm going from Ender 3s to a Bamboo Lab printer, which is a huge jump, a huge upgrade for me. Um, I could, you know, you could nitpick on some of the little features like, oh, you know, some people are like, oh, this thing sucks. And yeah, it's not as, it's not as streamlined. This thing's amazing. Uh, you can do everything you can do on here on their Bamboo Handy app, which is really nice and streamlined just as this. Um, you don't have to use this if you don't want to. But heck, for what you're getting, I'm not gonna knit and pick. I'm going from a, a piece of junk Ender 3 to this thing. Like, I have no room to complain about anything. So, um, I mean, probably the first impression you're gonna get from this machine that I got is, holy crap, this thing's fast. Like, there's alarm bells going off in your brain, like, how is this possible? Or this shouldn't be printing this fast, but somehow it's laying down plastic at lightning speeds and the prints look remarkable. Um, way better print quality than I was getting on my Ender 3. Most of the time, the print quality is better than my, my Mark 3, um, and it's doing it in half the time. Um, after I was using this for a week, I looked at my Mark 3, and I'm like, why would I ever use my Mark 3 ever again? Um, why walk to the grocery store when I can ride my bike? Um, you know, it's just gonna print everything faster so I sold that and used the money to buy another P1P and I'll probably be buying more. I kind of want to buy an X1, the base model, just to kind of compare all three of them. But <clears throat> usually if I have one print to print, I'll print it on a carbon just because the user experience nicer and it's sexy and the touch, touch screen is, is really nice. But uh, so far print quality, I haven't really noticed a difference. I haven't done any like stress tests between the two of them, but um, if you're tight on a budget, this thing all day long, P1P is, is phenomenal. Um, <clears throat> one thing I absolutely love that actually sold me originally to pull the trigger was that it has a one piece uh, hot end nozzle assembly. My biggest issue on the Ender 3s, even with my Micro Swiss uh, hot ends, is eventually with all the vibrations, uh, it would loosen up and I would start oozing some plastic out of the heat break. That was the biggest issue I was having. And the fact, or once I learned that this has an all one piece um, hot end, I'm like, I'm sold to never have to worry about that issue again. That's worth $6.99 for me. Um, and I really needed an upgrade bad. Um, I couldn't move forward in my business um, with the Ender 3s that I had. And already within three months of having these, I've already brought uh, 
about six or seven new products to market. And over the last three years, I've only had three products and I haven't been able to bring any new products to market. And I feel like all my time is just on maintenance in these stupid Ender 3s. So you can get products to market so much quicker. It really does put a new, um, a new meaning on the phrase rapid prototyping. Um, yeah, it's just, it's incredible. Um, it's remarkable. I think I used the remarkable every five minutes for the first week when I was using this thing. It just blew my mind away. Um, bed leveling, uh, perfect first layer every single time. Um, I mean, I've, I've had some issues where uh, maybe I didn't have any glue stick on a particular area and it didn't stick properly and it peeled up or something. But if you're just making a line, um, I mean, it's perfect. The, the, the thickness of that line, it's not squished here and tall there. It's perfect every single time. The way it, it levels the bed is just, yeah, amazing. I don't know why, maybe some other higher end printers do this. I've never used a Mark Forge printer. I've never used uh, any of the newer maker bots. Maybe they have some of those printers, but um, comparing it to other kind of lower, lower priced printers. Um, I don't know why anyone else doesn't do anything like this. Um, what else was I going to say? Uh, I will say not to knock the Mark threes, although I don't, how can a Mark three compare to this? How is Prusa going to compete with this? Uh, they can, unless they do something, they can't. Um, one thing that confused me about the Mark three is it would go and do all its, you know, 25 little sample points for the mesh bed leveling. But then I still had to set the Z offset. It still had to go and lay down plastic and then I would dial in the Z up or down to get that perfect uh, layer height. And for me, I'm like, why do I have to do this? Uh, the purpose of this, at least in my mind, is for you to determine the distance between the nozzle and the bed. Why do I have to set the Z offset? If I change my steel sheet, I have to reset my Z offset. This is true bed leveling where you do not have to set your Z offset ever. I could literally take off this spring steel sheet and put like that 316 inch, inch thick glass bed on here and it would give me a perfect first layer every single time. Um, there's no offset, it's just a perfect true bed leveling in, in my opinion to where the user does not have to fiddle with the Z offset, the Z height anymore. So. That's amazing. Uh, the user experience is so much nicer. I feel like it's a printer geared more towards people. Well, not necessarily. I would say more so business, um, but you could certainly use it for hobby. Um, one thing I, I really liked about Glowforge, which is the reason why I bought the Glowforge laser cutter, is for me, um, at least for the marketing videos, I'm like, this looks like a printer where I put my material in, I hit print, and it does a perfect job every time. I don't wanna mess around with settings. I'm using this to make money. My income is dependent on it. I don't wanna fart around with settings. I just want to kick out product as fast as I can. And so I feel like that's what this one is really geared more towards of either someone who's more business-minded or someone who is maybe not techie or who doesn't want to be techie to dial in all the settings and do all this stuff, um, which is me, 100%. I don't want to fiddle. Um, if you want to fiddle, buy a, an Ender 3 and do lots of mods or a Mark 3 or something like that. Uh, there's a lot of uh, proprietary hardware on this tour. You can't really mod it yourself or switch it out with other things. Um, so if you, if you want to mod a printer, uh, maybe not the best if you want to dive deep into modding. Obviously there's always mods you can do, but so for me, that's, that's great. Cause I don't want to, I want it to be hands off. I don't want to, to touch and make and maintenance and babysit and do all that stuff. Cause my income is dependent on it. Uh, just like our, our vehicle, our, our main vehicle is a minivan. It works great for our kids. I'm relying on this to get us from point A to point B. Um, I don't want to mess with it. I do have a project car, a 71 Dodge Dart that I, it's just a project car. I bought it so I can just tinker on it, you know? Um, so keep that in mind. I, I don't want to tinker. I just want something to get me from point A to point B reliably every time. So the biggest uh, unknown, I think, to all of us is, you know, the Prusas have established themselves as reliable workhorses. Uh, this is the new kid on the block. How is its reliability? I don't know. It's an unknown. I took a gamble and bought nine of them. Uh, I was a little scared, but 
heck, I just want to move my business forward. And in my mind, by the time these break down, I will have printed more products than my Enders or my Prusas. Uh, like I said, I've already been able to bring so many new products to market already because I don't have to mess with this. I don't have to babysit it. It just does what it does. It does what it's supposed to do every time. It just prints like it's supposed to. Um, so really, really, really loving this thing. Absolutely. The slicer, uh, I absolutely love. Um, I think the slicer is, is beautiful. They've done a really great job with that. A lot of people said it's just kind of a copy of the Prusa slicer. I've used Prusa Slicer for my Prusas. Um, I didn't really get that impression. Um, there's a lot of things that's kind of laid out the same, but um, I love it. I, I think it's great. Um, they have so many new features that I just haven't seen other people do. Um, well, first off, let me, instead of getting ahead of myself, <clears throat> Wi-Fi printing, uh, the ability to send your G code directly from the slicer directly to the printer without using an SD card. I haven't popped out an SD card um, in weeks. I think I did one a few weeks ago because either my internet was spotty or maybe their cloud was a little spotty or something. But most of the time, 99% of the time, I hit print, sends it from the slicer directly to the printer, starts printing. Uh, that's amazing. I don't have to get up and move down here or walk down to the basement or, or whatever. So just from a, a workflow standpoint, um, and it's amazing. You can choose, you can have all your, all your printers, uh, listed on the app and you can just say, slice this part, send it to this printer, slice this part, send it to this printer. And just the ability to do that so quickly, uh, the workflow is just really beautiful on this. Boy, the ability to have multiple different plates inside of your slicer. I think that is just amazing. It's such a nice tool. I can just uh, kind of have open up a big project, if you will, of if there's multiple parts I'm prototyping or testing, I can just keep dragging new STL files into uh, the same uh, 3MF file, I guess. And, you know, in Kira, maybe Kira has a way to do it. I don't really dive into all the features uh, too much to learn about them. Um, but typically, you know, I drag an STL file on print it and then delete that part and then drag a new STL file on. And usually what happens is I'll eventually need to delete that part and then drag in that previous STL file back into it to slice it again and change the settings again because it didn't print properly. So the ability to just throw all these STL files into one 3MF file and then just to click quickly click the plate that you want to print and send it to whatever printer that you want to send it to um, I think is, I think is amazing. Um, so these are, yeah, these are just some of my quick, uh, quick thoughts on this. Again, just to kind of satisfy some of the questions that I've been getting from you guys. You just been kind of want like, Hey, just kind of what's your, what's your take? So this is just kind of my quick take on these printers. I will definitely be buying more. Um, if I do run into issues and I have some printers break, I'll probably still be buying more. The only issues I've had. So, um, I had one. This was, I think three weeks ago, the nozzle fell out of one. So I guess it's not a truly one piece all metal hot end. I think it's just pressed in there from the factory, but a nozzle just fell right out, um, which wasn't that big of a deal because I just put a new uh, nozzle hot end assembly in it and we were good to go. Thankfully, did, nothing screwed up. Um, and then my first printer that I bought, um, right now I have some error message on it on the screen and I can't get past it. So not sure what that is. Um, I sent an email to customer service, so I'll hear back from them to see what that is. Maybe a wire jiggled loose on the inside. I'm not really sure, but overall, uh, they've been working really well, no issues. Um, and I'm just so happy for my business to get a printer that uh, actually does what it's supposed to do and print, and that can help me move my business forward instead of having to babysit all this stuff. Um, Maybe a, a quick little things that you could nitpick about that other people have nitpicked out as, uh, yeah, this, this is a little clunky. Um, I could get to any setting that I want to on an Ender 3 way faster than I can with this. It's just a little slow and clunky. Uh, but for me, that's like someone handed me a brand new Tesla Roadster and like, I don't know, the lock mechanism on the trunk is just like a little clunky. It works, but it's just like a little slow. Like 
I'm not gonna throw the baby out with the bathwater. Like, I've just got a massive upgrade. Me personally, I'm not gonna nitpick it. Um, it does what it needs to do just fine. So I'm more than grateful for the printer. Um, so yeah, and I would also say like, yeah, I'm not, I'm heavily biased towards the printer and I'm not, at this point, I'm, I'm not objective. Um, letting you know that I'm in love and <laughs> because I'm in love, it's probably gonna cause me to overlook maybe some of the faults, but to me, that's not a fault. It's a little clunky, but geez, I mean, take the, take the thing as a whole. You're printing at least twice as fast, if not three times as fast, depending on what part you're printing. And you're getting the same, if not probably better print quality than anything else in the price range. Like, what do I have to complain about, right? Um, so just a, a time comparison, Ender 3, one of my parts on an Ender 3, uh, the Ender 3 has a 0.6 nozzle, uh, prints the part in six and a half hours. This has a 0.4 nozzle, prints the part in three and a half hours. Um, I'm sure if I switch to a 0.6 nozzle, uh, it would be even faster. But I'm just keeping it at the 0.4 nozzle because, you know, uh, the Z seam and all that stuff is just a little more detailed. Um, filament loading and unloading is a little slower. Um, uh, on a Prusa Mini or a Prusa Mark III, uh, that process a little, is a little quicker. This is just a little slower. Um, but other than that, I got nothing to complain about and I'm more than happy. I'm really excited to be in on this company uh, early and grow with them and just kind of see all the updates uh, that they're going to be coming out with. Uh, really hope that they come out with kind of an XL version down the road. I personally don't think they're going to do that. I think they're just going to continue to refine this down the road, but I have no idea. Uh, but overall, it's an incredible printer. Um, I'm just absolutely in love with it. And I'm really eager for this year to, uh, yeah, just really see where my business is at the end of the year as a result of having <coughs> just an amazing, uh, reliable printer like already, like I said, I've been able to get so many more products to market because I have something I can depend on. Um, and that's really what I've been needing for, for such a long time. So hopefully this uh, video gave you a little more kind of insight, um, just kind of my take, my thoughts, my initial, my initial thoughts uh, on the printer. I'll be sure to do more videos on these printers. Down the road, if something breaks, I'll do an update video and I'll probably do another review video um, a year later once I've had a lot more time into it. I've been using them every single day, almost 24 seven for the past three months. So that kind of gives you a baseline of, of where I'm at. And I'll probably get the X1 base model and then just compare the P1P, the X1 and the carbon all together. But at the end of the day, they're just incredible machines. And if you're on a budget and you're wondering, should I get the top dog or get the P1P? I just say get a P1P. Uh, you can get a lot more of them for the price. Um, one, one other quick th thought here is, this year I'm finally gonna start offering 3D printing services. I haven't really done that because I haven't had time. I've been so hung up just trying to print my own parts for my business, much less what if a client comes to me and says, hey, I need 50 parts by the end of the week. Like, that makes me nervous as heck because I can't rely on my Ender 3s. Now I actually have a printer that I can rely on. And I am so much more open to taking um, print jobs, offering 3D printing services. I have 3D printing services offered on my website now because I actually have confidence. Even though I have a lot of experience 3D printing, I didn't really have much confidence in my printer. And so now I'm making my own parts. I'm offering 3D printing services. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had a client that had 64 parts, knocked them out, no problem, no issues. Um, last night I was in the shower and I'm like, man, I hope that guy orders a hundred parts every single week. And I'd probably buy a few more of these printers, but you know, I, I feel like I can uh, have more confidence in offering services because I have printers that will actually deliver. Uh, again, what's the longevity? Is this gonna break six months down the road, a year down the road? Who knows? I'll give you an update uh, when I find those things out.